I will explain things as I'm going through, you know, painting, what paints, what colors I use, and what brands of the underglazes I use. But I just wanted to show you something pretty cool that I just bought for myself. I didn't have one of these. And I thought they're pretty cool uh, where I can put all my brushes here. And I'll put the link for you guys uh, to see. It's uh, very inexpensive. I really needed one of these. Uh, it's got like these little bubbles on the bottom so you, you, it's easy to clean your brush. So I thought I've been using that I, for the past two days now that I've been doing a lot of painting. And it holds quite a bit of water. And uh, I can't remember the name, but uh, it's kind of like a caddy plastic thing and it's got different colors. But anyways, uh, it works really well. So I'm glad I bought it for me. It also comes with this lid, which I haven't used it yet to put all your colors. It's like a palette uh, that you can close. And this is the lid that goes right on top of that. It has a lid too, which is pretty cool. So you can put your underglazes here and close it. So I need to do that. The only reason I haven't done it yet is because I had all my, my colors already in this tray here that I use. <laughs> So, but I am going to start using these. It's much better because of the lid. So very useful. Anyways, I'm going to zoom in and we'll get started. I do test on the tile all my colors because some of them don't go well together with each other and some do. So that's something that you need to test. Make a tile like these. I think I've showed that on another video that I have. Make a tile and do all your colors and put the name that way you know and put the clear glaze that you use. I use Kitten's Clear, um, which is a real nice um, clear glaze. And I've put the recipe on another video. My previous video has a recipe for this. It's a real nice clear glaze, glossy, very reliable. It likes to be thin. So if you dip it, um, make sure that it is Thin application so so you see me sometimes using um, a mixture with the white and by the way the white I use is also from Duncan I'm trying to be more loose with the way I paint and not having things all kind of perfect the way I like to be, but. <laughs> uh. So the hummingbird, from what I saw in the picture, has got almost like a little whitish thing on his eye, like on this side here. So I'm leaving the area white on purpose. Like that. And then at the end, I'm gonna put some white underglaze over there. So his eyes are like almost black, dark brown. And I usually do, these are already watered down and you see me sometimes using this spray bottle. I like to just kind of give, give it a spray as I do, as I go. That way I know they all have a little bit of water on them. Now the white I use for blending, once I start getting to the edge where I want to blend with another color, start mixing a little bit of the white so you mix it lighter. And that way, it makes it easier to just blend the color. And then around the edges, I go darker just to give it a little bit more, uh, kind of like a shadow. Oops. I got out on the porcelain a little bit here and I'll show you how I go around that sometimes your on the glaze because it is watered down it goes a little bit under I mean on the porcelain that I don't want even though when I glaze it it will probably not show but I wanted to show you how I clean any messes or anything like that. 
So if you are in an area that is bigger where you can use a little sponge, you can do that. But I use my Sgraffito tool. And I just wipe it that way. You see how it comes right out? Um, so I'm, I'm kind of going over and putting like a, a second coat right now just around here. So now I'm going to start going with the greens. Um, kind of like a teal. So I'm mixing a little bit of the blue with the yellow to make that teal green color. Like I have it in here. And again, I always start with the um, darker on the outer edges. Oops. So here again, the water, because it is watered down, so that happens, okay? Don't be so worried about it. Like I said, the, it's easy to clean. I'm putting just a little bit of purple so I can start blending the green with the purple. And again, using just a little bit of white. So the nice thing too that happens with the water down on the glazes is it gets into the little crevices. You see how I'm trying to use just a little bit of the darker watered down green, which is it's called peacock green. This one that I this one right here. It's, it is like a teal color. So I'm using that so that it gets on the little strokes that I did when I was carving. So it gets into those and it creates the highlights <laughs> for me. So now I'm going to use a little bit of chartreuse, kind of mix as I go some of the colors. See how bright that green is? That's what I like about Duncan. I haven't been able to find green that is like that yet easy to blend because it is watered very easy to blend with the blue right there so you don't see like a division on like a line dividing same thing here. I'm doing just a little bit more blending. You can kind of go back and forth on that division there with the colors until you see that it's blended. You see how I'm taking the green higher a little bit? But I can see the purple underneath, so it gives the nice um, blended colors there. Okay, so I'll continue with my green. Before I get to here is the yellow. I do like to make that... Um, mix the neon blue with the yellow it makes like a real bright um, teal beautiful green blue color and what i'm gonna do is use that for the darker areas like here by the wing i want it to be darker and then i can blend 
blend with the medium blue, which is a darker blue. Gonna blend now with the green again. Just because where the wings are, it creates a shadow there. And then blend in with the lighter. You can add a little bit more white here and there create a little bit of highlights on his body. I'm mixing the white with the chartreuse. So now I'm going to start going with the yellow down here, trying to blend. Chartreuse is a good color to blend in from green to yellow, right? Because it's in the, right in the middle. So it makes a good transition there. I'm going to use a little bit darker in here again. Yeah, that might be too dark. I can blend in. You see how using the darker, it's just like when you're drawing, you want to make the edges darker to create that um, effect. Like the shadow underneath. These little feet. I'm also making a darker in there. So once this dries, this uh, this coat, which has like around two coats, as you saw, because sometimes I do one and then I go back and fill in. So I would say it has like two coats. You can still come back once it's completely dry and do more, a little bit more touch up, like for highlights and, and shadows. So I'm going to use now the orange just to give it a little bit of highlights on his feathers here, on the tail feathers. I'm going down. I'm worried with this orange because it is, um, as you know, the flame orange is a real bright uh, bright orange color but I am using it for highlights and then I'll come over with the orange mixed in with um, with white okay So now I'm mixing, like I said, with the mixing the yellow or the bright orange with some white just to create more subtle orange and hopefully that red, reddish orange color will show through just for some highlights on his tail feathers, you see. How because it is a translucent underglaze, you can still see through. Unless you put like a real heavy coat, um, you can still see through. Once you start getting to maybe 
three to four coats, then starts to be a little bit more opaque. So, so far, I think, oh, I guess I could use a little bit more highlight right here under. I'm going to make just this area a little bit darker. And for that, I'm going to use the flame orange and the coral red. Just to make this area here a little bit. Darker. And then I'll use the more, the one mixed in with white, I'll use it for here with some yellow. Maybe I'll use yellow here on the tail. Just mixing some colors so that it's not like one. You know, just you can mix um, orange and yellow highlights. So I think I'm good with that. I'll go ahead and just take that real quick. I'm going to start by using a darker purple. I might even mix in with a little bit of black just to make it a little darker. Just because it has that texture and I want, it, I want the texture to show through. So I'm using a little dark in here. You see how he pulls as I'm brushing it? He goes right into the texture and it shows much better. So I, I mix just a little bit of black with that. And then I can mix in with the white and go over again to create the, the highlights. Because the on my reference picture, it was, um, it looks like they're very soft colors on the wings. Almost like look like you can see through, right, through them. So they have purples and pink almost like a, has some gray in it too same thing on the back of his wing, I mean, on, on, yeah, on the edge here, and making it stand out by using something darker around, and I'm going on all the edges. This is purple mixed in with a little bit of black just to make it darker. Separate one wing to the other.
his feet since I'm using black now I'm gonna go ahead and do his feet it's like a grayish black color so I'm gonna go ahead and do his little feet here Adding just a little bit of blue. So this is the part that is has more purple. So I made it light because um, it's mixed in with white. So now I want the bottom part here closer to the body a little bit more um, pink so I'm gonna mix a little bit of pink with the with white um, this one is hot pink by spectrum Actually, this is not the right brush for it. Um, let me see. I want a flat, flat brush. Um, oh, here it is. So using a flat, they call this flat brush, square, filbert. But usually filbert is rounded i thought this one is flat anyways it's flat and i like this to do kind of like a feathered effect right at the very edge so so i am mixing a little bit of the white with a little bit of the purple and a little bit of the medium blue just to give that special Okay, so I think I'm going to leave alone the feathers now, the, the wings. I have purple, green, blue, green, yellow. So he's a very colorful bird. Oh, I haven't done his uh, beak. I haven't done his beak yet, which is going to be grayish. Grayish color. It's going to be a grayish with a little black.
So then the flowers, I will probably speed up the part of the flowers. I think you guys were more interested on the birds. So uh, he's, I would say, 90% done. I'm still going to wait until it's all dry and come back again. Maybe add some more little shadows around. But that's pretty much it. You see how I can still see the darker little feather strokes in here. Same thing here. And hopefully that will show through through the clear glaze. I'm tempted to make him leave him without any glaze and then glaze the rest. So we'll see what I decide. But I'm going to continue painting that I had started earlier today just so I know the colors that I use. So this mug is a present to myself because it's flawed, the hummingbird. As you can see here, I use uh, a lot of the drippy glaze and it just went over his body. But you can still see the painting. Just looks like he's got snow, like an avalanche hit him. <laughs> but I'm pretty happy with the results and the variation of the orange of the, the flowers. And that drip on the hand I really like and the glaze combination I'm really happy with. 